Welcome to the Solish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke and I'm your host. On the Solish Podcast, we're talking all about our soul journey and how we connect with ourselves, with others, with the energy around us. And I love bringing on guests who are truth seekers, um, spiritual leaders, spiritual seekers. They're on a journey just like you and I. And they come and they just share with us whatever it is that they do, uh, how they connect, how they work with people, how they find healing. Uh, so amazing, just like all the guests that we've been having, even since the Summer of Soulish miniseries, which was also amazing. And if you still haven't finished that or checked out all the episodes, you absolutely should. <laughs> I highly recommend it because <laughs> it was just an amazing mini series. Like I, I don't even feel like I planned that. <laughs> I don't think I planned for it to be so amazing. And it just was every single episode was amazing. Um, and I think just every guest I have on and every episode I share with you guys, I just feel like it's, it's my heart. It's those people's, those guest speakers hearts. And I hope that you've been able to connect in a way that has just been so encouraging and inspiring and uplifting because that's my goal. And um, just really quick before I get started with this, I'm so excited because I have been asking for just the intuitive hit. I've been asking for how can I support people more to connect deeply with themselves, with others, with the energies around them, with God, source, universe. And I finally felt like my Patreon membership, which was, it was good, but it wasn't serving the purpose that I knew it should. And so I am so excited that I relaunched my Patreon membership. It's brand new membership. And the tiers are $10 and $20. For $10, you get weekly energy forecast via cardology and if you haven't heard about cardology totally go check it out i also do cards of the days on my whitney apke instagram so you can check that out and kind of understand what that is and what that's like um as well as i infuse the energy forecast with spiritual practices and rituals that go along with what the energy forecast is for that week so you can really harness that energy and utilize it for your highest good and benefit, as well as the $20 membership has the weekly energy forecast, spiritual practices and rituals, as well as a intuitive tarot card and Oracle card reading. So I love that that's weekly as well. And then there's a monthly healing circle that's only available to the $20 tier as well. That is going to be so powerful. Our next um, our first actually, and next, uh, monthly healing circle is September 20th. That is the full moon. And so I specifically chose that date for us to be able to harness the energy, utilize the energy of bringing in our intentions and releasing and letting go, and also filling up with whatever it is that we need to help us align, to help us become more powerful, to transform, to transmute whatever it is that we need. And so I'm so excited. I just can't, I can't tell you guys how excited I am. I'm so excited for this membership. I've been having people sign up. It's amazing. I'm hearing from them that they are absolutely loving it, that it is everything that they needed to up level as well, that this perfectly supports them in their journey, because you're not just depending on me, you're also intuitively stepping into your inner voice and your inner guidance system is being turned on in my membership. So that's part of it is I don't want to just do things for people, right? Like everyone comes to me for Reiki, everyone comes to me for spiritual coaching, intuitive healing, right? Um, even tarot or oracle card or cardology, which is, that's a long haul of a learning journey, which I've been on for a little bit, but, but you can at least tune in, in the ways that it, it sings to you. It calls to you, you know, if, if tarot is calling to you, but you're not sure how to start, my membership is the perfect way for you to start because you're intuitively picking out of a, out of a list of cards that I picked intuitively for the week. And you are picking from those and then finding out what the meaning is after and how that applies and to get that validation and that confirmation that you hear too, you can hear too. So I love it. And then the monthly healing circles are just everything. I cannot wait. Um, I'm going to have pre-ceremony, pre-circle um, 
um, a ritual, a practice, like um, either taking a bath or a shower uh, with Epsom salt or maybe a salt scrub um, that you have. Sugar scrub can work fine too. Salt scrub would be better, but things like that to prepare yourself. So it's like you're coming into the space not raw straight off off the press you know you are taking your time through every through every moment you're intentionally preparing yourself right this is what people have done for ages they prepared themselves before they've gone into ceremony and so that's part of it too and then the aftercare as well so it's not just come in sit down have it it's also leading you through a process that can really help you and benefit you in such a huge way because it teaches you the things to do before coming and preparing yourself to have an incre incredible, awesome, transformative, powerful moment of healing um, and transmuting and just all of that. Oh, I just, can you tell? I'm so excited. <laughs> Can't wait. So I don't want y'all to miss out. And so I just thought I would share that with you um, because oftentimes my Whitney Afghi stuff doesn't necessarily cross over to my, the Soulish podcast stuff. Um, I do keep them separate in a sense, but I wanted to offer that to you, my Soulish fam. I love you so much and I don't want you to miss out. Um, and I want you to be a part of the Patreon. I just think you will get so much out of it because I know you all are on the same soul journey, spiritual journey that I am. And I want to support you in whatever ways I can. And this Patreon membership is that. I'm so excited. I can't wait. So enough about that. Let me sip some tea. <laughs> and we'll get into... Um, what I really feel is on my heart to share with you guys. Um, so this morning I was praying and meditating, um, and I just asked for divine inspiration to come this morning, um, for me to be able to share with you guys an experience that I had last week. And I really felt like this was something I was meant to share. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to keep it, you know, private to myself, um, or it just wasn't ready to be shared yet. I wasn't sure. I felt like, no, no, this will benefit people because I think we're all, we're all on a journey of healing and discovering ourselves and healers need healing too. You know, like I am not, not without, you know, that need, like I'm constantly clearing, I'm constantly cycling through, I'm constantly checking in with myself because I minister and love on and work with so many people all the time, even through Instagram, that's an energetic connection. And so I, I do whatever I can do to just be a sanctuary, a holy, loving, peaceful, joyful place, a conduit um, that I can be a light bringer. I want to be a bringer of light. You know, I really want to light people up. I want to encourage. So I do that in my personal practice, not just because of what I do, but because of where I want to go and who I want to be. And I want to step into everything that I know I'm meant to step into, into my divine. And I've been like on that kick of like, I want to step into my divine and just, you know, realizing like, my authority, realizing how not a victim I am to life, right? And everything that goes on in life. And so I wanted to share this with you because I, I know that wherever you are in your journey, you can totally, um, you can totally relate to this, you know, um, that this is definitely something that can resonate with, with everyone from whatever walk, even if you're on a religious journey right now, maybe not so much spiritual, but religious journey, this can apply to you. It's, it's applicable to everybody in every space of every journey that they're on. So with that being said, um, when I moved to Denver, I kind of knew that I had the opportunity, the very cool opportunity to, um, probably work with shamans or just like Native American healers. And I, I find it so precious that I'm one eighth Native American, like, oh, it just like does something to me and like Native American music. Um, I actually went to a Cherokee tribe when I was like 13 and it was with my church at the time. And we were, we were weed whacking, we were um, building painting, we were doing everything on this reservation just to, just to like help their space and really serve the people there. And 
at one night we went into like a town hall meeting and they wanted to, they wanted to show their appreciation and gratitude for all the work we had done for a week. We were there for a long time. Um, and so they did like a drum and chanting thing. And I didn't know what was happening to me, but I went to the back because I started just totally falling apart. Like the music just did something, hearing it live, feeling the drums hit your chest. You know, it was like, oh, it was like everything. So I I was like, what's happening? And I don't know if I knew that we were specifically going to a Cherokee reservation, but I found out that night, I believe is what I'm remembering that I had asked like, like, I know these guys are Native American, but what kind of Native American are they? You know, I was like 13, like, I don't know what to say. What tribe? Um, and um, I think I asked one of the people that lived there. Um, it was in Covalo, um, California, kind of around the Chico area, if you know where that's at. And and one person said, oh, Cherokee, like we're Cherokee. And I was like, oh, my I'm 116th Cherokee. Like, no wonder this is hitting me like in my bones. <laughs> so, so dramatic as a 13 year old, but I was so in it. Like, I'm so raw and authentic. Like, if I felt something, it was like, Mm-mm. I felt it. I like let it be known. I was like, let, I was a mess. Um, but I literally felt it in my bones. Like, my, my, body was having a reaction to the music and the chanting, whatever the words were, it was like, it was hitting me on all levels. And so I I knew, even though I don't believe the Cherokee are here in Colorado, but different, different, you know, Native American um, tribes are, um, I should look into that more. Um, But I just, I I had the feeling like this is going to be my opportunity where whether it's Native American or, um, you know, from like Latin or Hispanic heritage of kind of that um, more shamanic, you know, type of healing or experience. So I just knew that was going to happen for me and that that was just going to perfectly fall into place. And I, I just, I knew it. So I just like, let it be like, it's going to happen. But I started Googling and searching and stuff and I didn't really find anybody. And all of a sudden this healer kind of came into my purview. And so I started following her on Instagram and, um, she's a local healer and started watching her and really felt good. And just all of a sudden, after like maybe a month of following her on Instagram, felt like I was meant to go and go to her. And I don't currently have like, not, this doesn't mean anything like I'm, I'm off them or something is not that at all, but like, I didn't have any like deep healing work, like I, that I knew of that I was aware of. And so I knew anything I go to her for, um, it's going to be subconscious. It's going to be shadow stuff that I haven't pulled up and out yet. Um, that, and I knew that's probably why I was feeling drawn to some sort of shamanic healer, native American healer sort of type, because they usually work a lot with shadows, um, shadow work and subconscious things. And so I just knew like, you know, we're all blind, right. And we all have blind spots and subconscious stuff that isn't so easily brought up on our own. And, um, that's for anyone. So I, I fit into that category, but I had done so much healing work and I continually do so much healing work on things and so sensitive to any triggers or anything that, um, comes up, pops up within me. I'm very aware and I, I intend to be aware. So that's, that's partly why I'm aware is because I literally wake up and go to my, my meditation corner, my altar. And I immediately start whether it was the dreams I was having, uh, the night before, um, whether it was something that popped up the day before that I didn't address that I realized, Oh, I didn't address that. Um, let's bring that up. Why did I feel that way? You know, why did that thought come in my mind? Um, and I sit with things and I allow healing to happen. So that's literally my daily morning ritual. Um, and so what's funny is I actually, two days prior to meeting with this healer, I had an experience. I just got really tired one day. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just lay down and allow my body to take a nap. Obviously I need it. I'm feeling really, really exhausted. All of a sudden I can't even really concentrate. Can't keep my eyes open. So I'm not going to fight it. Let me just, let me just lay down on the couch, put my computer down and just rest for a second. Obviously I need it. Rested, woke up, 
still felt pretty groggy. Um, I'm not a good napper. Um, so I usually, it's like, my body's like, okay, we're going, we're going to bed. <laughs> like night, night, <laughs> like I tell my dog night, night. Um, my body takes a little bit. I, my brother is so good at napping. He can nap in like 15, 20 minutes. And I, I'm so jealous me. I'm like an hour. Um, so I woke up and I still felt groggy. So I took my time and all of a sudden I felt the atmosphere shift in my apartment and I'm like, Hmm, okay. So I just sat there and I just started to kind of meditate and go, okay, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling the atmosphere shift. I'm waking up and I'm feeling the shift. Okay. Um, and as soon as I acknowledged the atmosphere shift, I felt my whole body shift and how that felt for me was I felt, um, my whole body released heat, like got the goosebumps, um, and released, but it was like this energy, if that makes any sense, like it was different than when you get cold and like all of a sudden you get goosebumps and you can feel like, oh, I'm, my body's releasing heat. It's adjusting. Um, the AC wasn't on, it's been like 90 degrees. I don't know why there would be a reason for me to release heat really. I mean, I, the temperature in my place stays usually 70, 72. So there was no like shifts, you know, happening um, physically that would make sense. And so I just felt it. And I was like, oh, okay, like, okay, we're going. So, so I'm like, you know, is this my moment to astral project? <laughs> I thought maybe this is my moment. <laughs> and I didn't know. So I just was like, whatever, whatever it is, like, I'm ready for it. Do this. Let's do this. And all of a sudden this quiet little, little voice goes, hi. And so I was like, hi. And all of a sudden I just felt, felt this presence like over me. And, and so I just, I just said, hi, um, you know, what are you, who are you? And I personally heard, and I don't know if this is from conditioning, so I'm letting it be whatever it is. And I'm just trusting what I hear, but I just heard my name is Mercy. And I'm a fourth density. So I'm like, okay, interesting, interesting. I was like, okay, Mercy, um, you know, what are you here to share with me? What are you here to tell me about or show me? Um, and I immediately started seeing visions of my pineal gland. And Mercy said, your pineal gland is calcified. And so you're not able to, you're not as open. You're not able to hear as much. Um, you're hearing only that much of what you're meant to hear. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and so then Mercy started showing me visions of how to decalcify. Now I had never heard of calcifying. So in my head, I was like calcifying, like, like energetically, or is this something that can physically happen? Like, I've never heard of, like, I've heard of like metal or like, I don't know, calcifying, like happening, like with other, like with, with objects. I didn't know that could happen within you. I had no clue. Um, so that was foreign. I ended up Googling later and everything got confirmed. It was like, you can calcify your pineal gland. I did not know that. Um, and everything she recommended was Googleable, you know, of, um, she showed me eating lots and lots of dark leafy greens. And I felt like I was being called into a fast of whole fruits and vegetables and, um, dark leafy greens, um, as much fruits as I wanted. Um, and, and just like eating as much of that as I can. And then I felt like I was supposed to go through that for like two weeks. And then the last, um, the last week, the the last four days, um, or the first four days of the last week, sorry, confusing. I know. Um, so like Saturday, Saturday, sorry, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I would be doing a juice fast only. And then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are water only. So I felt like I was just majorly meant to detox in so many ways. And obviously like my body's going to detox in other ways by doing this, right. Because it's, it's a pretty good fast. Um, and I just felt like, don't, this isn't a religious thing because I've only ever known fasting and religion. I haven't honestly fasted in like years. So I was like, wow, okay. Like, I don't know if this is my conditioning or if I'm really authentically hearing this. So I tested it out 
and just asked and, and said, can you confirm that again for me? That you're asking me, like what I'm seeing is that you're asking me to not just add these in more, but you're asking me to go on like a fast. And she said, yes, you need it. You absolutely need it. And this wasn't a doom or gloom kind of prediction, but um, Mercy basically said some things are going to happen in the next couple of months that you're going to need to be like totally 1000% clear. And, um, and so this is why we're doing this now. This is why I've come now to support you in this so that you can do this, do this fast, heal, renew yourself, restore yourself so that you can come into that ability of being able to hear really clearly. So I was like, okay, okay, cool. Like that, that's really helpful. Thank you. And she said, you're welcome. She, I say she, Mercy said, you're welcome. I don't know if it's a she or he, <laughs> I have no idea, but Mercy said, you're welcome. I'm here to support you through the whole process. So Mercy is still with me. I definitely feel Mercy around. Um, I can feel the essence, um, whether female or male, it doesn't matter. I can, I can just feel that essence around. Um, and I asked Mercy also, like, how, like, how are we connected? I was very curious. How are we connected? And I felt like Mercy said, um, your higher self actually asked me to come and support you in this way. This is actually what my skill set is, is to help initiate these processes and to support in these moments and these journeys. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool. So this is somebody who my higher self literally was like hiring. <laughs> is that possible? Can they hire each other? Like when they're in the, in that dimension, but my higher self literally said, I know this is going to be rough, you know, or just difficult, or she's going to need this. I'm going to need this. And so can you come and can you support her in this time? It's all new to me y'all. So I'm like, okay, I know what I heard. Like, I can't make this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, okay. And I had actually booked with the healer for the week prior to this happening. And she canceled and rescheduled last minute for Monday when this happened. And she rescheduled Monday to Wednesday. So this happened for me on Monday, the day that I'm supposed to meet with the healer and the day I'm supposed to initiate the fast is when I'm meeting with this healer. So I could not have planned this at all could not have planned this at all. Like literally it was just insane to me that I was, I kind of was pissed. I was a little upset that, um, that it had been rescheduled multiple times and it just made sense when I got there. Ah, I'm supposed to start this day. Cause this is to kick off the process. Um, this is meant to activate me and to help me in this process of like decalcifying, restoring, um, stepping into my divine. And so I just was like, duh, of course, like I should, I really should just relax. <laughs> That's what I felt like. I should just really relax because like, here I am, like my panties are in a bunch and I'm even coming to this going like, Hmm, you scheduled me twice for like no reason. <laughs> and it's like, it was perfect. It was literally perfect. It was exactly what I needed. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that uh, were done because I want to give you an understanding of what this could be like for you. Now, every healer is unique and has their own craft and their own way of doing things. But um, this healer was so cool, very Native American, but more on the Latin, Latino, Hispanic side of the shamanic way. And like some of the things that they use, like they, she used an egg, um, I think a couple eggs on me, like three eggs on me. Um, which is like a, a Native American belief that eggs can absorb negative energy. Um, and then I think there's even like a test that they do that they crack the egg in just room temperature water, um, even cold water. And if the egg starts to boil, like starts to turn white, then they know that there's like a bunch of negative energy that you were carrying. So there's a, there's a bunch of, you know, different methodologies and ideas and beliefs and all of that. But I didn't know that she was using an egg on me at first. I thought it was like a crystal. It felt like a crystal when she was doing it, which I thought was really unique. Um, but she rubbed it on different areas of my body, uh, my, my head, um, my lungs, um, my heart, 
um, my feet. She, um, she rubbed it even on my tummy, my womb area, uterus area. So like your sacral, um, she, she moved it around there. Um, apparently, um, I had either one person, um, or maybe two, she wasn't sure, but she just felt like I had at least one, um, energy left from a lover, um, still in my womb past relationship, still stuck in my womb energetically. So that got released. Um, so I didn't know I had done a ton of cord cutting. So I was like, I know who that is, um, or who that would be. Um, so I was grateful for that. I definitely feel a little bit of a shift from that as well. Um, and what was really funny was <laughs> she told me to, and this is very, this is very awkward, but a couple different things, you know, she, she told me, um, to milk my breasts and I was like, I'm not pregnant. I haven't given birth. Like the, there's no milk. <laughs> mm, there's no milk in my breasts. So like, I don't know how to milk them. Like how, what do you mean? <laughs> And she was like, no, 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 I know. She was like, it's energy. She was like, you take in so much energy. Um, you, you're such a giver and you're such a receiver of energy of love. Like you love people so much that you're carrying it. It kind of is stuck. Like you need to cycle it out. And that's one way, because, you know, women, that's part of how we give life to, right? How we sustain life, how we give love um, and when we have a baby and stuff like that. So it's just energetically where we end up storing it in our body as, as well as our womb area, our heart area. I think everybody has the heart area pretty strong, but like, she probably wouldn't have said that to like a man, right? Maybe it would have been like your arms, like you need to massage your arms, right? For hugging people. I don't know. I have no idea, but, um, but that was really interesting. I had never been told that before. Um, didn't know that was the thing. Um, and, and so she spoke to me a lot about my divine feminine. And this was really powerful because I think I had thought, which I agree and believe that we are both masculine and feminine. And I had Brandon Bozarth um, kicking off. Um, he was, I think the second or third episode. Yeah. Second or third episode of the summer of solace. You should check our episode out. He's amazing. Um, we talked about divine masculine, divine feminine and living, living in that. And he, um, he definitely said like, we are all both like we're, we're to be balanced. You're both. Um, but in this patriarchal society for women, for your divine feminine, and if, if that's how you believe is best, you, you know, you're best aligned is by, um, by kind of leaning towards being more divine feminine than divine masculine. Um, in this patriarchal society, it's really hard for us to step into to our divine feminine because a lot of times we feel like that's there's no power or influence in that because it doesn't operate at all like the masculine, the, the divine masculine operates. And so oftentimes, whether it's culture, society, um, even just energetically, we're not stepping into our divine feminine, those that align in that way and feel like you you maybe don't um, and that you need to. And I, I also believe that men like lack that in this world, that they don't step into their divine feminine as much as they need to um, flow, right? Um, but she said for sure, you need to step into this more. This is like where you like are most powerful and influential. I was like, got you. So she gave me some tips on that. Um, she also... Uh, did like a total like smoke show, <laughs> the room filled with smoke. I mean, she burned, I don't know, a crap ton of incense and herbs and all this stuff, all these spices and um, tree resin and all this stuff that I had nothing, I had never experienced that before. Like the most I've done is like a stick of incense, you know, <laughs> like, or sage or Palo Santo. Like I had never done like tree resin or, you know, herbs or things like that. And, um, so I was smelling stuff I've like never smelt before. And I'm like, Whoa, this is crazy. And like, I can hardly breathe because it's so smoky in here. Um, and I thought that was really fun. Um, really cool. But I, I felt the healing of the smoke, like as I was breathing it in, I felt, I felt it going in and out. And I just felt so healed and cleansed. 
Um, and so I know now, like I bought some of her stuff that she makes at home, um, basically the same stuff that she used on me. And I have that now in my home and I've been using it. Like I start burning incense at 6 a.m. and I don't stop. And I literally feel like my house is like a temple, like a sanctuary. And it, it has provided me in the last couple of days, such a space of intention and love and, um, And also just, I don't know, that reverence for my soul's counsel, God's source universe, and inviting that conversation in my space. Because I really wanted to up-level and I wasn't sure how to up-level. So all of this to say, um, you know, I was blown on, like she blew through like a stick thing that actually really scared the shit out of me when she first did it. Um, but I felt it. It was like the energy around everything she did was so intense. Um, and I've never, ever, ever experienced anything like that in my life. Like I've done a lot of energy healing and I've never experienced that. I've experienced it in the religion, in the Christian world where you get laid on of hands and some people go down in the spirit, as we say, um, and get ministered to. I've seen people move. Um, where their body starts moving, you know, and energy is just moving. Well, the same thing was happening for me on this bed. Like I, at first I thought it was just me feeling energy leaving and kind of moving out. And I felt my stomach moving and doing like different things. And then I felt my arms doing different things, my legs doing different things. And so I was just allowing, but I, at first I thought, oh, this is, I'm just feeling the energy. I'm not actually moving. And at one point she started speaking to me in my ears at different points, saying different things. And I came back into my body a little bit more when she did that kind of came back into the room and I could tell, oh my gosh, my body is actually moving. Like my, like even like my stomach, which felt kind of funny because it was doing like different things. Like it was moving. It was so weird, uh, but so cool. So yeah. So I like, I felt different things and I was like, okay, um, so energy is definitely moving. This is great. Like, this is what you come here for, you know, like you come here to shift. Um, and so I was feeling that hardcore. Um, she spoke a lot to my pineal gland. Um, she spoke a lot to the hemispheres of my brain to, to come back into balance. And it was just crazy to see like the different things that she would say and how I felt my body responding. Like she would say it to my left and right hemisphere brain. And I would literally feel the shift happen. It was just, it was so cool. So all that to say, um, I came home and I definitely felt totally different. I didn't feel raw. She said, you might even like have like, you might feel like you need to throw up. You might feel like you're going to, you know, (laughs) <laughs> do things for those of you who are listening. I just did the sign language, uh, move for shitting. <laughs> um, and so, you know, might have different like bodily reactions to the shift that just happened energetically. I was cool, cool, cool. Um, and, and I, I didn't really have anything adverse. I just felt like something shifted and it was really, really great. So, I, um, I started my fast that morning as well. And I have continued and she just, she also encouraged me, like, don't, don't get religious with it. Like if you feel like vegetable pho today is like what you need. She's like, just tune in, be intuitive with your fast. If you feel like vegetarian sushi, go have some vegetarian sushi, which I did yesterday. And, but the majority of my diet is spinach, kale, um, tons of fruit, um, And I'm enjoying it. I actually don't feel, I don't feel depleted. I don't feel, I feel very much like I'm, I'm eating what like my body wants me to eat, but I don't feel depleted. I don't feel like I lack, um, I am hungry more often. So I'm, I'm taking fruit and stuff like that snacks with me. Um, so that I'm not, I'm not, um, not eating when I need to eat. Um, so that's been really beneficial and I just feel way more open. So I'm just trusting the process. And I just want to encourage you guys, as you feel like 
you are stepping into new levels, right? New dimensions. You're expanding, you're up leveling, right? You're stepping into all that you are. I just want to encourage you. I do it as well. I go and I get support when I need it and I trust it. And I just want to encourage you guys to do the same, whether it's with me or somebody that you just feel called to that is, is feeling like they're in alignment with where you are and what you need. Um, there's nothing, I, I believe that we do have everything we need within us, but there are gifts that are released to people for specific reasons. The same thing like Mercy, who is not in this dimension, right? Doesn't exist in the dimension, the third density dimension that we exist in here on earth. But Mercy came because Mercy has a gift to help people transition or to help people through a time such as what I'm going through. And so I'm being supported by an entity of being that it ha has a skill, has an expertise in this. And that's, that's how I'm being supported on that. But we can be supported with Reiki, intuitive healing, spiritual coaching, tarot cards, readings, um, cardology. There's so much uh, different types of healing. Like I do Reiki and intuitive healing, but, but my healer, she did more like shamanic, um, healing. There's also medicines, plant medicines, right? Even including weed, including marijuana is technically a plant medicine. Um, so it should be used as such. Um, and not so much recreationally, in my opinion, I think it, it still is a sacred plant medicine that is meant to bring healing and clarity and openness, um, including, you know, um, what Seagreed was talking about with, um, is it, Peyote. Um, I, I wanted to say coyote and I knew that was wrong. Peyote, um, which is new to me. I've not done that. Um, mushrooms, ayahuasca. Um, there's so many different things that you can feel the call to. And I just want to encourage you to trust yourself. When you feel the call to something, know that it's going to happen in the timing that it's going to happen in the way that it's going to happen and with whom it's meant to happen with. Um, and just do your research too, you know, ask for reviews. Um, there's no harm in that. It's not an insult. You want to know and vet that somebody is legit as well. You don't want to just go to anybody. Um, I don't think everything we fall into is meant to happen. I think we do need to do our research and be very vigilant over our energy, protect your energy, guard your energy. Boundaries are healthy. Um, and so I did my research. This person was vetted for me. And so I was like, you know what? I do. I feel it. Um, and I watched for a while and I just want to encourage you to do the same. Do it with me. Do it with whoever it is. Watch their social media and just see um, if you still feel that way. You know, um, if someone recommends somebody, go and watch them, you know, and go see if their energy is is feeling right, if you're vibing, you know, um, because this will help you in your, in your journey and in your process of transformation and expansion. And it's, it, it really supports you. So I can't say that enough. It really, really is supportive. And so I love you all. I really am so happy that I was able to share this with you. I wasn't sure if this was going to be the right timing, but I just felt like this is fresh. I wanted to share it with you guys. I love you all so, so much. And I just am so excited for where you're headed. I'm so excited to join in with you, whether just on this podcast, or if you want to work with me, if you want to join my Patreon membership, I'm just so excited and feel so privileged and grateful to be in your ears, to, to watch me, on YouTube and just to, to have that connection with you is just a beautiful thing. And so I love you all so much. And I hope that you end up being led in your journey of healing and transformation to the right people. And I just want to bless you with that, that as you are seeking deeper healing and connectedness and are wanting to go to a new level in your spiritual journey and step into your divine masculine, your divine feminine, step into who you're meant to be, who you feel and know you are, um, and to remove whatever doesn't align, whatever doesn't serve you any longer. Um, I just, I bless you with being connected with the right people, um, with um, hearing the right things and being divinely guided and inspired. And I just want to bless you with that. Um, I hope this episode was encouraging, uplifting, and inspiring to you. I love you all so much. I'll see you next week.